little bit long, but it's a chance for you guys to ask a question that you may. So we uh, have a very short start. Okay, good. And so the, the WebEx people are all, all there. All there? Okay. So I hope all you folks can hear me remotely as well as the people here in front of me. Um, I'm David Lyman, and I'll be the lead facilitator for our weekend retreat in Vanderbilt. I like to have these pre retreat meetings because what we'll do, the format of what we do, is unusual enough that people sometimes aren't entirely comfortable with it if they just suddenly jump into it. So I like to break the ice with it at least as much as possible. And normally this pre-retreat meeting isn't quite so far from the retreat, from the retreat itself. Normally we have Friday before the retreat, but spring break and then I'll be gone. So I'm sorry that we had that so much earlier. I'm not here to make it. But <clears throat> first a little bit of context about the Retreat format itself. This is the Great Teaching Seminar is what it's called, and there are many versions of a lot of kinds of teaching retreat, and there are different versions of this. But this one started with Roger Garrison and David Gottschall in about 1969. Uh, and there are certain premises, certain principles, which if you hear in the room you have in front of you, and you'll have at the retreat a lot of this helping. I'll be going back over also. But um, the idea is that the, the basic fundamental principle is that teachers know best about what teachers need to know to do. And so we meet and we help ourselves. We don't need keynoters, we don't need experts. We can do it ourselves. So for you know, over 40 years, there have been various versions of these retreats. Some are weekend retreats like ours. Some are three or four days. Um, the original ones were two weeks long. That may be a bit much. But so there are versions of these all over the country, all over the world, I suppose, but certainly all over the country. Many institutions have some version of this process based on these principles. There are regional. There are statewide versions of this in various places. California has one, for example. And then there's one designated as the National Great Teaching Seminar, and that's uh, on the Big Island in Hawaii. Um, and God, David Gottschall, who helped originate this, is still leading some of these around the country. He always helps lead the one in Hawaii every August. And a little bit about me, I found it valuable to give you some sense of why I'm doing what I'm doing. I had been lucky enough to be involved in the retreats for about 20 years. And I have, in fact, I originated the original teaching retreat at ACC in the mid-90s. It was done every year for about eight years, and then for various reasons, we stopped doing it. They, they made us stop doing it. So we had a break of about five or six years, but we've been doing it now every year for the last four or five, I believe. And, and apparently, we'll continue. So I've been helping to organize and lead that. For five years, I led the statewide great teaching roundup uh, sponsored now, it's, it's under the leadership of the Texas Community College Teachers Association. I've helped um, facilitate several other of these around the state in California, for example, Illinois. And I was lucky enough to be involved to attend the national retreat in Hawaii and then be invited back the next year as a guest facilitator. So I've been doing these for a while and I'm not unbiased about how well they work. My hope is that when we finish the weekend in Bandera, you'll go home thinking that is the best professional development I have ever done in my life. Many people think that, and maybe you'll be one. <clears throat> so we'll spend the weekend together. We will have an agenda. 
that the agenda is what we call a minimal rigid structure. We'll have specific times that we do try to stay on those times as much as possible, and we can address those if we want to offer. But it may just say nine o'clock meet. May say we'll meet. What we'll do depends. So the basic process is beginning Friday afternoon about three o'clock. We have a small group session. We have a large group meeting to get us oriented first, but a small group session. A large group meeting that Friday night, a couple of other small group sessions Saturday morning. It started. In those small group sessions, you share in the big trouble the success and challenge papers that we've asked for. And each, the makeup of each small group will be different. You'll have some overlap. So even if you share your success more than one, it will be mainly with a different group of people. And the facilitator's main job for that, so the first set of small group discussions is to listen. We'll be taking notes. And we'll meet about midday and Saturday, probably while you guys are having lunch. And we'll compare notes and make a list of topics that seem to have bubbled up more than one time. Topics that seem to be especially important. We'll write those down. You'll come into the room and you'll see what we have looked at. And you get to talk about it. Add new topics, take some off, consolidate. And then you will vote as a group on which of those topics to devote the remaining small group discussions to. So for a little bit of Saturday and the small groups uh, uh, sessions on Sunday, you will have determined what those topics are with our help. Uh, we do go until 8.30, 9 o'clock usually on both Friday and Saturday night, where we all meet together and we have large group activities. Some, there are some things that I've planned for us to do. Those are always flexible. There will be other things that when we get to Bandera, I'll ask you to be thinking about, and then some of you may do some presentations or activities at those evening large groups. One of the primary principles of this is free time. You know, sometimes the best times are the in-between times. So we have a several hour chunk of time Saturday afternoon that is free time. Um, and you didn't really, you know, at about two o'clock or so, you'll dismiss you. You didn't really have to be back and if you, if you didn't mind missing dinner. So we really have to be back until about seven o'clock for our Saturday evening large group session. So Friday and Saturday after the large group session, we always have what we call a social hour. Um, we'll have snacks and drinks there. They'll come to the to the cabin of the facilitator. You don't have to, of course. Um, and you can have informal talk and snacks and drink for really as late as you want to. And sometimes those are the most valuable time. <clears throat> as you know, the costs are all covered for the weekend, with one exception. We do ask that if you're able to, you donate um, $5 if you're not going to drink alcohol, 10 if you are because college money can be used for food and alcohol, of course. And one thing Christina has in the back of this room, if you're remote, I guess you can email us or tell us now or something. Uh, we'll take this as a snack request. We go to the grocery store before the weekend, and I'll we'll buy a lot of stuff to have during our social hours. So the weekend is pretty full. Some are organized activities. Some will be entirely at the olive tree. So that's the way the weekend evolves. There are some premises, as I say, in which this approach is based. And if you hear, you have in front of you uh, the purposes and premises of the great teaching retreat. You'll have these in a notebook when you get too bad there. Um, if you're if you're with us remotely, you don't have these in front of you, but I'll but they're not very long. I'll be highlighting them. I'd just like to review these. So first of all, the purpose is to celebrate what we do, to celebrate this. Also to encourage 
us to encourage teachers to venture beyond our own environments and to study ideas which we can use, which can be transferred, even from those in other disciplines, even from those who may be inexperienced teachers to those of us who are experienced teachers. I learn things every time I do this. I learn great teaching ideas from everybody. So one purpose is to get us to go beyond our daily places where we do our daily things. Um, and in terms of location, we always like to choose a place. And been there has been our place now for a while, which is close enough to be fairly accessible, but far enough away that you're not tempted to go down. Far enough away that you're really out of your normal daily environment. Um, Used to, we would say, to get away from the phone. Well, that doesn't happen. I understand that. But to minimize contact with what we do every day, to get a sense of difference. And it's a very nice place. Um, we'll eat three square meals a day, which I'm not used to. So we'll be eating and talking all semester, or all weekend. But we're talking about teaching. How often do you get a chance to spend a weekend talking to people about teaching? And that's all you talk about, or the core of what you talk about. So another purpose is to, promote our, is to promote our introspection and our own self-appraisal uh, by providing a climate for this kind of review. And what it says here is providing a climate for serious review. And we will be serious, but it's not solemn. It's not solemn. I think you'll have a great time. Um, the, the fourth purpose is to, to practice rational analysis. We're carefully consider what we do and to develop approaches that are realistic. One of the great benefits of this retreat is that you gather an idea that you can use money and you can back the fuck, maybe two. And then the final purpose, and these are formal purposes stated by the people who begin this program. Uh, I'm not making it, but uh, it's, to, it's to stimulate the exchange um, among teachers by expanding our own network, by expanding our contacts. There are all those people who meet at the retreat who remain friends for years afterwards, whether at the same campus or not. And that's the advantage of this, of this, of a